Hi guys, welcome back to the homestead. Today I'm inside and I'm gonna be making some sweet relish. I absolutely love relish. It's one of my favorite toppings to put on my hot dogs or hamburgers and pretty much sandwiches in general. I just love that tart, sweet little kick of relish. Um, so today I thought I would bring you guys along to show you how I make relish, especially now that it's the end of the season and we have a lot of cucumbers, onions, peppers, and just vegetables galore. And the reason I really like to make the relish as well is because it uses quite a few vegetables. It's not just um, cucumbers or peppers or onions. It takes a few of the vegetables, puts them together, and we create something so delicious. I'm also gonna can these. I usually don't can a lot. If you've been here before, you know that I don't can very many of my vegetables. I actually like to blanch and freeze most of my vegetables. But if you're gonna make something like a prepared sauce, Sauce, like tomato sauce or pasta sauce or relish or anything like that you want to um, actually go ahead and can it so that it um, extends the shelf life so you can leave it out at room temperature in your pantry without having to put it in a freezer or anything like that so I'm gonna go ahead and get started what I need is cucumbers peppers onions um, and a few other ingredients we're gonna first grate all of the cucumber you can use um, a food processor as well but I like to grate it because it makes all of the pieces pretty even um, so we're gonna grate it then we're gonna put salt on it and then we're gonna leave it for the whole day and then we're gonna come back tomorrow to finish off the process make sure you get a lot of cucumbers so you can make a year's worth of relish in this one go because it does take a couple of days to finish it off so let's go ahead and get started and make some delicious relish today i'm actually only making half of the recipe because i've been eating a lot of my cucumbers <laughs> so i'm only making half of the full recipe but i'm going to give you the ingredients for the full thing so you can make all of the relish that you want um, and if you don't have enough you can just half the recipe like i'm doing today so what you'll need is seven large English cucumbers, whatever cucumbers you have, just make sure they're not overgrown because if they're overgrown, they'll be very seedy and you don't want seedy relish. So your cucumber is going to need about seven of those, about four onions, um, four, you know, good size onions. We're going to need a quarter cup of our pink Himalayan sea salt, or you can use uh, pickling salt three cups of vinegar, white vinegar, apple cider vinegar works as well, half a cup of flour. You can either use gluten-free flour or some starch as well in here, which is what I'm gonna do, but you need some flour. One teaspoon of turmeric, a teaspoon of ginger, teaspoon of celery seed, a cup of water, and you're gonna need four one pint canning jars. I'm gonna use the small ones here and I also have my rings and everything ready to go okay so let's grate these cucumbers and get them on salt okay so I'm just gonna get my grater here I have a bowl and I'm gonna just start grating this cucumber just the whole cucumber I'm not peeling it or anything like that you do want that green outer skin of the cucumber in the relish that's what gives it that nice relish green color you can add some bell peppers spicy hot peppers red pepper flakes really it's up to you how you want your relish to taste so go ahead and experiment you see this one has a few little seeds in here but not too many if it was overripe I would scoop out the seeds. This is why I like to pick some of my cucumbers and my eggplants a little bit on the younger side because then the seeds haven't completely developed yet. I find if I let my eggplant go too long, they're just way too seedy and I don't enjoy eating it like that. Same with the cucumbers. If you let them go too long in the garden, they just get way too seedy and it's not, it's not a fun eating experience. So it doesn't take very long. It's a pretty large cucumber here. Getting through it pretty quickly. And once I grate all of my cucumbers, we're gonna get our salt. And we're gonna 
sprinkle the salt all over this and toss it all around and then we'll leave it grating all of my cucumbers in. Big or small, doesn't matter. This is where you get to preserve the cucumbers. So go ahead and just use them all up. Okay, so I sliced up my onions. I'm also going to grate the onions in here. This is probably the hardest part is grating the onions because we know onions are not pleasant. So I step way back and then I grate it real quick as fast as I can to get this step over with so I don't tear up too much and start crying. <laughs> Keeping the onions in bigger pieces and not slicing them too thin actually helps keep holding it together while you're grating it. And again, if you want to make this easy on yourself, go ahead and use a food processor or just chop these by hand really, really small. All right, so we're gonna add the salt now. I'm getting, I'm doing half the recipe, so I'm doing an eighth of a cup. Um, you're gonna add a quarter of a cup of your salt. And then I'm just gonna use my hands and mix it really well. And this is gonna sit for the next day. I'm just gonna put a little cheesecloth over this to make sure nothing gets in there and we're gonna let it sit so right now we're gonna cover this and I'm just going to leave it just off so I'll see you guys tomorrow okay guys so it's the next day and I'm back we're gonna complete our relish recipe here so I had it sitting overnight you don't have to let it sit for more than like six to eight hours and it should be okay And right now it feels almost like uh, it's been cooked because it's been sitting in the salt brine overnight. And the salt kind of like tenderizes it so it feels like it's kind of cooked. And you can see just how much liquid is in here and it's still dripping. So let me empty this and I'll keep squeezing it. You wanna get out as much of the juice out of the pulp as possible. This is a fabulous way to use up your cucumbers. And the cucumbers don't even have to be completely fresh. I was saving a couple of these cucumbers for the past like week or so. Um, and if in the middle of summer when you have a lot of cucumbers coming in, make relish. I'm not a huge pickle person. I mean, you can only eat so much pickles to begin with. So I know a lot of homesteaders pickle cucumbers and then they end up just sitting in the pantry. Making a relish is just another amazing way to use up your pickles and some onions and peppers and all of that and especially just leftover extra vegetables that you have like if you've already preserved all of your all of your vegetables and you have a few extra just hanging out this is a perfect way to use them up okay I think that's pretty good okay so here's what we have you can see how it looks. All the juice has been squeezed out. Okay, so the next step is for us to heat the vinegar and the water. We're gonna do one cup of water and three cups of vinegar. I only have my apple cider vinegar here today, so that's what I'm gonna use, but typically you would use white vinegar. Apple cider vinegar and water. Okay. And we're just gonna let that heat and come up to a slow simmer. While that's heating up, I'm gonna move on to mixing up the seasonings and a little bit of flour, which is the next step. So let's go do that while this is heating up. Okay, so the next thing we need is some turmeric. So I have my organic turmeric here and half a cup of flour. I'm gonna use my gluten-free flour here. You use regular flour. And I'm also going to add a one teaspoon of ground ginger, a teaspoon of turmeric, and a teaspoon of celery seeds. Instead of celery seeds, I'm actually gonna use my pickling um, 
spices here. It has mustard seeds, coriander, bay leaves, dill, fed and Greek, um, cinnamon, ginger, allspice, pepper. So there's just a lot of good stuff that's used for pickling and this is literally the perfect recipe for it. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of that. And just a little teaspoon of our pickling salt like this our pickling seasonings um, and then we're also gonna add some ginger I just chopped up some like ginger root here and I just chopped up like four little knobs of it so you can use ginger powder if that's all you have or minced ginger just okay the last thing here is the white sugar and we're gonna need three cups of the white sugar Again, I'm only making half the recipe, so I'm only gonna do one and a half cups. And I'm just gonna fill this up with cup sugar like that. Okay, so now that we have all that, we have our seasonings, the sugar and the vinegar is heating on the stove. Okay, last ingredient we need is the flour and that's really what's going to help thicken up this sauce of ours. So we're gonna do half a cup of flour. Okay, so I have my gluten-free flour here. I'm gonna measure out half a cup here. Okay, so the vinegar mixture is just starting to heat up. I'm gonna add the sugar as well as all of those good spices. And I'm gonna add the flour in at the last second here. So everything is in. Just gonna rinse this out a little. There we go. And we're just gonna bring that up to a boil. I'm gonna get the flour and add that in now. This is my gluten-free version. But when you're making it, just go ahead and use regular all-purpose flour. Okay, so we're gonna get that in there. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water in here just to make a little bit of a roux because if I add this right into the hot mixture, it's just gonna curdle up and form little flour balls. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water in here and just kind of mix it together. So I'm get my flour in. Just like that. And I'm gonna stir it and cook it down until this is a little bit thick. And then we'll move on to the next step. Doesn't it look pretty though? Next step is to get our cucumber mixture in. And again, we're gonna whisk it all together. We have to cook this for about 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna keep it on a nice medium to low heat and just let that simmer away. You can see how nice and thick it is. It looks really good, you guys. Nice and thick. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that simmer for a couple of minutes. Simmer for 10 minutes, and then we'll move on to the canning part of the recipe, so. All right, so it's boiled for about 15 minutes, and we're just going to put it in the jars, and make sure you wash and sterilize your jars by running some boiling water inside and outside of them. Okay guys, so we're at the next step where we're filling up our big pot here. Make sure you're uh, soup or stock pot that you're using is taller than the jars you're gonna use because you want the water to cover the jars completely so we're gonna get this up to a boil and then we'll start pouring our relish here into our jars and then we'll start canning okay what I'm gonna do is spread a cotton towel tea towel on the bottom here i'm gonna put two of them because you don't want your glass jars to touch the bottom of there you want them to sit on top of the towels because if they touch the bottom of the pot it'll get too hot and they could shatter so if you have a rack something like this like a cookie rack a cooling rack that you could put in there that would be great but this one doesn't fit in here so i'm just going to use some towels so I have four jars here and I have my canning jar lids. 
Okay, so I have some boiling hot water that I just boiled and I'm just gonna pour it in to sterilize each of these jars. Just gonna pop this on, give them a good shake around. I'm just gonna leave about like an inch or so headspace. A quick little stir just to make sure there's no air pockets. Okay, so you can see how I poured it and there's some little bits here. That's why you need a damp towel so you can wipe it all around. And especially the very top. Like that. And we're gonna get the top on the jar, pop that on. And I'm just gonna wipe the rest of these down like this. Okay, so let's get the tops on. On it, and you're gonna tighten it just finger tight, right? So you're just screwing it on, and that's it. You don't have to put too much strength in it, just finger tight, like that. Okay, so I have my towel here and I'm just gonna drop that down. You can see, I just, just gonna lower it down like that. Like that. Okay, just gonna make sure they're all in there and they're covered. Okay. Okay, so I have the lid on the pot with the jars in there they're just gonna process for 15 minutes. I'll see you back in 15 and we'll check on our relish. have our canned relish you can see how they how it looks one thing I'll tell you about this is that um, over time the relish will develop the flavor more so it actually gets better tasting over time so we are good to go they all snapped and you can see how they kind of suck in a little bit and I heard them snap so I know that um, these are ready to go I could just put a label on here that says September 2022 and we are all done guys this is as simple as it is to make your own relish yes it does take some time but it's a great way to preserve your leftover vegetables and um, and to make something really delicious that you and your family will absolutely enjoy something that's different than your typical pickles 
and uh, you can just use it in so many different ways on top of different things, burgers, um, hot dogs, sandwiches, as a dip. It's really good. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed my recipe. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay peaceful. Bye.